guys, I'm Natalia and I am from the channel Hey I'm Natalia. Today I'm going to be guest vlogging on EF's channel to tell you guys all about the things you can do on a budget while you are in Sydney. I've been living in Sydney for the past two years and I've definitely picked up on some things to do to make your money go a little bit further while you are traveling through Sydney. So I've put together a little list of things you should do while you are here studying, whether it's the best coffee, whether it's the best restaurants, whether it's the best free things to do, I got you, it's all good. So let's get started with your Sydney adventure. So the first thing you guys are going to see when you land into Sydney is the Sydney Harbour Bridge. It is absolutely massive, it is like the centre of the city and there are millions of people who come to visit that bridge every single year. One thing you guys can do while you're here is to do the Sydney Harbour Bridge climb. It gives you panoramic views of the entire city and it's absolutely amazing. I've done it myself two times but it can get very expensive. Now something I have learned since living in Sydney is that there is a thing called the Pylon Lookout. The pylons are the four corners of the bridge which basically you can go up inside and get pretty much three quarters of the same view that you would get if you're on top of the bridge. For literally a fraction of the price you save so much money but you still get pretty well the same view. Something Sydney is very famous for is Bondi Beach. I'm sure you've heard of it. There's a TV show about it and it can get really really crowded. I definitely do recommend you check out Bondi Beach for just kind of the atmosphere, the culture, but if you just take a little bit of a 15 to 20 minute walk to the right, you'll find some pretty incredible beaches. There's a walk along the coastline called the Bondi to Coogee Walk. It's absolutely free and you get absolutely amazing Instagram photos as you walk down, see the coastline. It's incredible. Some of my favorite beaches are in that direction, which leads me on to my favorite swimming spot, Gordon's Bay. So Gordon's Bay is absolutely beautiful. If you just look into hashtag Gordon's Bay on Instagram, you will see why. The waters are so blue on a sunny day. There's rocks all around the edges that you can set yourself up for the day, have some speakers, have some friends, have some drinks, hang out there. It is really, really cool in the summertime and I definitely recommend picking like a smaller beach alongside there as opposed to heading over to Bondi Beach where it can get absolutely crazy. If you guys are looking for a little bit of a different view of Sydney that not a lot of people know about, if you guys get off at Milsons Point Station, which is just over the other side of the Harbour Bridge from the city, uh, there is a place called Wendy Secret Garden. It is a cute little garden that's been so well maintained for all the visitors that come in. It almost feels like you're not in the middle of this massive city. There's so much greenery, there's some water fountains in there, there's some places that you can set up for a picnic with a view of the Harbour Bridge and it is definitely awesome. Not a lot of people know about Wendy's Secret Garden so you guys know more than like a lot of the people that actually live in Sydney so definitely go check that out, I do recommend. Sydney's transport is super well connected. You've got trains, you've got ferries, you've got light rail, you've got buses, literally anything that you need. Getting from A to B is super easy and I definitely recommend you download TripView to use on your phone. There is a trial version which costs you nothing at all which you can use and it'll show you how to get from A to B. Or you can buy the full version, which means you can save all your frequent trips that you do so that you can see when the next train's coming and it makes your life so easy. If you guys get off at Central Station, one half of it is actually like the original like structure when it was first made. It's got high ceilings, it's beautiful, there's coffee in there, it's everything that you need. But also a short walk or train right away is Town Hall Station. I think it's like a 10 minute walk, it's nothing at all. And right by there, there is a little coffee place, which I definitely recommend, it's called Skittle Lane. It's kind of hidden away off the main street, but it is so cute and aesthetically pleasing and of course, if you're all about Instagram photos, you want aesthetically pleasing coffee places and this is the one for you. Also right by that in the galleries is my favorite Japanese place of all time. If you ever ask me where I want to go out for dinner, I can guarantee you it will be this Japanese place and it's called Ichiban Boshi. They honestly have the best ramen. I freaking love it. I am obsessed. It's also really budget conscious if you're going out with friends because you guys can get like a main meal plus like sides and then also a drink for about $20, maybe even less depending on how much you're going to buy. But yeah, I definitely recommend go checking that out. They are so good and... Oh, I could go for some ramen right now. If you guys like me and you enjoy free things because when the heck do you get free things? So when they come around, it's like the best thing ever. Make sure you guys Google the What's On In Sydney guide because they often post free events, which is pretty cool. Last Valentine's Day, I actually took my partner to one of these events and it was super cute. It cost us absolutely nothing at all. And we went and we did little handcrafts and it was just like a nice different Valentine's Day. So yeah, there are free activities around. You just have to go looking for them. And that is definitely one of the places to look at to find a free activity. Before choosing to go out somewhere during the day, I often think about whether it's budget friendly but also whether it's Instagram worthy because you know if you didn't go there and take a photo did you actually go? I know you guys are going to be sending cute photos back to your friends and family so let's make them the best we can. Head down to the grounds of Alexandria where they have the cutest little cafes and the way they serve everything is just so cute. It's all country style, it's all fresh, it's oh so good. They have really good coffee there, there's a petting zoo there, there's markets there on the weekend and it is just so adorable. While you're walking through there it's all lush with all this greenery and this florist and you can get Instagram photos in there for free, won't cost you anything. There is no entry fee into the grounds of course though if you want food and things like that that will cost you money but like the initial view is free. Another place you can walk in for free cute photos is Luna Park. Luna Park is again over the bridge and getting off at Milsons Point Station. You can walk in there free of charge, go check out the candy floss, walk through, see the rides and get cute photos in front of 
a carousel. And then if you do decide that you want to go on the rides, go on the roller coaster, go on the rotor thing, which is freaking terrifying. You guys can go buy a ticket there. It is not completely budget friendly, but the initial walk in, get cute photos definitely is. If you guys are looking for a cute outing for the weekend, I definitely recommend checking out the markets around Sydney. Some of my favorites are Marrickville and Glebe. Marrickville is more for like fresh produce. You'll get all the freshest vegetables. There's puppies running around, fresh coffee. It's really good. Um, and then also Glebe is really cool because they sell more like handmade goods, clothing, things like that. So depending on your vibe, whether you're more towards fresh produce or vibey stuff, that's where you'll go. There are so many markets throughout Sydney, but I definitely recommend you go check it out. It is a cultural experience in itself. There's live music, people are hanging out, having a good time. Super do recommend on a summer day, spring day when it's nice and sunny out. Last but not least, I'm gonna tell you guys where I get my clothes for on the cheap. Now when I say cheap, I don't mean that they're low quality. What I mean is that they are like brand clothing, but at half the price. Around Sydney, there's a whole bunch of places called outlets where they sell clothes for like half the price, 75% off the price of what they were originally in stores before. There's a DFO, which is a little bit harder to get to, or then you can go to Birkenhead Point, which is a ferry ride away from the harbor. There are so many stores throughout there, they'll have like a Lee store set up, there'll be a cotton on store set up, and they will be like discounted prices completely and utterly, and you can get so much more for your money if you go and shop at these outlets. That's definitely a way to save money on those things that you need, so that you can spend more money on things that you want, like traveling and things like that. Alrighty guys, so those are some of my top tips for coming to Sydney and saving money and still seeing and doing everything. If you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to EF's channel. So many guest vloggers come on here and talk about all the cities that you may visit in, you may study, you may work in, who knows? These videos are super helpful, so I definitely recommend that you subscribe and stick around for more content. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye guys.